we took Dan's advice and began moving out of our IRA by charitable giving and just then our charitable giving to our church and Meriton's Purse and wherever out of a Schwab account check. And then I turn around and write checks out of my checking account back into the investment account. So I'm not diminishing what is invested. Perfect. And that's working well. I've worked, uh, we've, you know, trimmed down uh, the uh, IRA about 25000 and up to the investment account about 25000 But when my accountant looked at it, he said, well, why don't you put some of the take some of it and put in a Roth. And I thought maybe you could explain to all of us the tax implications and any other to our heirs from each of those three accounts. I know I have to pay taxes to move from the IRA to the Roth. Um, For as long as I can remember, Dan has always been urging us to decrease our balances in qualified accounts. So a qualified account is an account that qualifies for special tax treatment because the government says so. So things like your 401k, 403b, TSP, IRA, whether it's a traditional or a Roth, all of those things, annuities, all of those things are qualified money. They qualify for special tax treatment because the government made laws saying so. So the issue is that most people have accumulated all of their investments in qualified money. Two issues with that, um, not necessarily for Roths, but for the other, all of the pre-tax money. Number one is I believe we are in an environment where taxes are going to be higher in the future than what they are today. The way that you win in a qualified account is to get the money out at the lowest tax rate. So if you believe that taxes are going to be higher in the future, and I do, just because if you look at we're as a country, we're $30 trillion in debt, we're only accumulating more debt, we're talking about spending, all you hear about is spending more money, spending more money, spending more money, and you even hear the government and the current administration saying that they want to increase taxes. Now they're saying that they want to do it to the rich, but, you know, that's only going to get them so far. It's not going to get them everywhere that they need to be. So... If you believe taxes are going to be higher in the future than what they are today, then it is a great idea to move money out of those pre-tax accounts and pay taxes at a lower rate. Uh, She also mentioned that she's doing all of her giving from her IRA. That is another great strategy to reduce your qualified balances. And I just said that the way that you went in a qualified account is to get the money out in the lowest tax bracket. You cannot beat 0%. So if you're 70 and a half, then that's how you qualify to be able to do this. And you have to give the money, just like she said she was doing, writing a check directly to the nonprofit organization from her IRA account. So what's happening is let's say that you're in the 22% tax bracket and you give $10,000. Well, if you take the money out of your IRA yourself and then you write your your check from your checking account, you're paying $2,200 on that $10,000 that you just got out to give. If you just simply write the check directly to the ministry, now you pay zero tax on that money. So what she's doing, which is a great, great uh, thing to do, is she's replacing the money. If she normally would have written the, the check out of her checking account, now she's replacing that money into her investment account. So now she essentially got money out of the IRA paid $0 in tax on it, and still did the giving that she had determined in her heart to do, and save the taxes. So that is a a great, great strategy, and that's exactly what we've been advocating here at the ministry. If you are over 70 and a half and you have an IRA, you should be doing all of your giving from the IRA because you're going to save the tax dollars on that. And then, you know, once you've saved tax dollars— We're not suggesting that you do anything illegal. We believe in giving Caesar what is Caesar's, but Caesar is a very, very bad steward of money. So we only want to give what we have to, to be in compliant with the law, because we as Christians believe that we should honor the authority that is set over us. But uh, 
give Caesar what Caesar's and let's be efficient with the rest of it. So then her follow-up question was, should she be uh, putting the money into the non-qualified account, which is what she was doing, or should she open or add it to a Roth? So the thing that you have to remember with a Roth is that it is still qualified money. So my answer to Marilyn is it's really going to depend on your balance between qualified and non-qualified money. So if you add up all of your liquid investments and you have your Roth and your traditional IRA, and let's say that makes up 80% of your liquid assets, I would continue going to the non-qualified account because the Roth is going to be the most tax beneficial for your heirs because when they inherit that, when a non-spouse inherits it, they get 10 more years of being able to keep it in that account free for growing free from taxes. So that is a huge benefit. The issue with the Roth is the regulation piece because the Roth was created by the government. They can and they do, and I believe they eventually will change the rules on that. So they could do whatever they can get support to do. Now, none of this is on the table. This is just speculation on my part, but they could say, you know, hey, we've We've got all of this money out there in Roth money, and yeah, they've already paid taxes on it, but hey, we need money to pay off people's student debts, and we need money to, you know, send to wherever or whatever they want to do with the money. Go green, infrastructure, all of the things that they want to spend crazy money on. So they could they could look at all of this untapped and untaxable money in a Roth account, and they could say, well... You know, we said that it was going to come out tax free, but we're changing our minds on that. And, but we're not going to do it in a big way. Maybe we're just going to charge you like a a 5% fee to get the money out. Oh, and we're going to tell you that you didn't have to take required minimum distributions on it before because you don't with a Roth. But now we're going to make you do that. And we're going to make you do that when you turn uh, 70, let's just say. So now you're going to be that becomes a little bit less attractive. So Roth is by far the best type of tax advantaged account that you could have right now, but you still want to have balance. So it's going to depend if you if you still have the largest majority of your liquid net worth in qualified accounts, you want to start to balance that out. In addition, there are some... Um, Some other requirements that you need to know about the timing of when you opened your Roth, you have to have it opened for at least five years. And there's some other things that you may need to be aware of. So if it's an existing Roth, you've got a good balance in your non-qualified accounts, then I would say that that could be a good idea.